Okay, today we are diving deep into a topic that really challenges a lot of our core ideas about marriage, love, and masculinity. We're going to look at the science, the real science, behind why millions of men fantasize about their wives being with other men. So yeah, let's get right into it. So here's the central question, right? Why would a man, maybe even a man in a happy, loving relationship, get turned on by the one single thought that society tells us should fill him with jealousy and rage? The answer, well, it isn't simple, but it is absolutely fascinating, and it takes us deep inside the wiring of the human brain. And look, this isn't some weird fringe thing we're talking about. A huge study by social psychologist Dr. Justin Lemeler found that a staggering 58% of men, 58% have had this fantasy. We are talking about more than half of all men. So this isn't an anomaly. It's a very real part of male psychology. Okay, so if this is that common, we have to look past the easy explanations. This isn't just about guys in unhappy marriages trying to find some kind of escape. In fact, as you're about to see, the science points in the complete opposite direction. And this is the part that blows most people's minds. The research actually shows this fantasy is more common in men who say they're really happy and satisfied in their relationship. So that tells us the answers aren't about a bad marriage. They're buried way deeper in our biology and our psychology. It really is about how the male brain is wired. To really get this, we have to go way back. We have to look at these ancient evolutionary drivers that are still pulling the strings today, a lot of times without us even having a clue. And that brings us to this really key evolutionary idea. It's called sperm competition theory. You see, for a huge chunk of human history, our ancestors lived in groups where it was possible for a female to have more than one partner. So evolution basically favored the men whose brains went into overdrive when they sensed competition, increasing arousal, producing more sperm. It was just a biological strategy to win the reproductive race, you know? And that ancient wiring, it's still in our heads today. And you can actually see how that ancient wiring plays out hormonally right inside our bodies. It creates this powerful feedback loop. The fantasy of a partner with someone else, that's the perceived competition. That thought alone can trigger a spike in testosterone, which then ramps up arousal, which in turn makes the fantasy even more intense. It just feeds on itself in this biological cycle. But it's not just evolution. There's also some fascinating brain chemistry at work here. Our brains are literally wired to connect risk and taboo things with reward. The very same pathways in your brain that light up for sex also light up for risk-taking. So what does that mean? It means the forbidden, I'm not supposed to think this nature of the fantasy is actually a huge part of what makes it so exciting. So let's move on to the next layer of this, because it's not all just primal biology. There are some really complex emotional and psychological forces happening here that are just as important to understand. Humans are incredibly visual creatures, and we have these things in our brain called mirror neurons. They're amazing. They don't just fire when we do something, they fire when we watch someone else do it. It's the whole basis for empathy. So when a man imagines his wife experiencing intense joy and pleasure, his brain literally starts to simulate that pleasure for him, and that creates this really powerful form of arousal. And this leads us to a word you might not have heard before, but it is absolutely crucial for understanding this whole thing. The word is compersion. It's basically the opposite of jealousy. It's the genuine happiness, joy, or even pride you feel from seeing someone you love be happy with somebody else. And far from being a sign of weakness, the ability to feel compersion usually means you have a deep, deep sense of security in your relationship. Now, it's really important to get this. Not everyone who has this fantasy experiences it the same way. Not even close. You can basically split it into two different psychological paths. The hot wife framework is all about pride. The man's masculinity actually feels enhanced because his wife is so desirable. On the other hand, the cockold framework can get its arousal from themes of humiliation or feeling inadequate. They are two very, very different emotional roads that lead to a similar-looking destination. So we've got the biology, we've got the psychology, but what does all of this actually mean for real couples in the real world? Because the gap between what goes on in our heads and what we do in our lives, that's a really critical piece of this puzzle. And this brings us to what researchers call the trust paradox, which is kind of wild when you think about it. To even let your brain fantasize about something that feels threatening, you have to feel fundamentally secure and safe. So men in really strong, stable marriages, they have this psychological safety net to let their minds wander into taboo places without being afraid their whole world is going to fall apart. 
the fantasy itself can be a sign of a healthy marriage. But, and this is a huge but, there is a massive difference between fantasy and reality. For the vast majority of men, something like 85% of them, this desire lives, breathes, and stays in the world of imagination. And that's okay. The fantasy serves its own purpose. It's safe, it's exciting, and there's no real-world risk. For most, there's absolutely no desire to ever act on it. Now, for that small minority, that 15% of couples who do decide to explore this in real life, the research is crystal clear on what it takes for it not to be a complete disaster. This is not something you do to fix a broken relationship. You need an incredibly strong foundation, constant communication, super clear boundaries, and it has to be something you both genuinely want. Without all of that, the risks are just huge. All right, so let's pull all these threads together. After diving into the biology, the psychology, the relationship dynamics, what's the big picture here? What does the science really tell us? Well, we've seen it's not just one thing, right? It's this complex cocktail of different forces all mixed together. Those ancient evolutionary instincts, our modern hormonal reactions, the brain's love for the forbidden, our ability to feel pleasure by watching others, the emotion of compersion, and that paradoxical safety of a really trusting relationship. So here is the bottom line. The most important thing to take away from all this is that this desire is not a flaw. It's not a sign that a man is broken or that his marriage is failing or that there's something wrong with him. It is a deeply rooted, surprisingly common, and scientifically explainable part of the vast and complicated thing we call human sexuality. And that leaves us with one last big question to chew on. If our desires are so deeply shaped by these ancient, powerful forces inside of us, what does that mean for our modern ideas about love and monogamy and commitment? That's a question worth thinking about. 